in order to prove where the Christian cross came from, the first thing we need to do is to remind ourselves where religion gets most of its ideas. And in order for us to do that, we have to look up to the stars. In the stars, there is one constellation that is typical within the Southern Hemisphere, and it's called the Southern Cross. These four stars form a cross in the heavens, and they're only able to be seen in the Southern Hemisphere. Hence, you see Africans have symbols that represent this cross that you can see from the sky and you see places like china and south india but europe is completely absent of this because you cannot see it from europe even in the americas you see it but this is the least interesting part of it i will prove that not only did they see this crucifix as the same thing but they saw other things identical and in order to do this we have to take two cultures which could not have borrowed in recent times we take the amazigh people of north africa and the nguni people of south africa and let us see what we come up with both these cultures have geometric patterns. And as you can see, their geometric patterns have something to do with their culture. And they're very deep into their culture. Something that people don't know is that a lot of these geometric patterns have to do with connecting the dots and stars. But let's start over and compare their patterns. And eventually we'll get to the cross. So as you can see, these symbols are more of a representation of objects, realistic objects and verbal or yeah, verbal objects. And you can see here, this is a seed. This is the represents the seed of a male and it's a symbol of life and fertility. This represents beneficial force. This represents the diamond shape represents a woman, which is the same in Zulu and this represents a tree the axis of the world this represents Aries and this represents the evil eye so as we go on we will realize that there's all these representations of figures in this Amazigh culture North African Berber culture so let's compare it to the Zulu ones as you can see the triangle pointing up is masculine the diamond is feminine like the other one the zigzag represents masculine but it also represents lightning or, th or thunder lightning uh the diamond is feminine and it also represents a shield the triangle pointing up and the triangle pointing down because the triangle pointing up is a male and the triangle pointing down is a female that res resembles married men but the diamond pointing up and the diamond pointing down touching each other that represents a married woman so let's break it down so if we compare the two you look on the left it's the amazig di um, diamond shape and the diamond is a symbol of a woman associated with a snake it represents the union of opposites in other words, this diamond represents marriage. And in the Zulu beating, this diamond also represents marriage. Something you can't see is that these are two triangles that are touching at the base. Meaning that if they touch at the base, that's a married woman. But if they touch from the two tips, that's a married man. It's the same symbol, just adjusted so you can tell if it's a male or a female. And even in the amazig version you can tell because of the touching an obvious similarity between these zigzag patterns is the fact that they're referred to as an arrow and this one is referred to as an assegai meaning a type of spear 
So this zigzag shape represents a spear, but also it represents lightning. In both cultures, this represents lightning. Now you can kind of see why it would represent lightning, but why would this represent um, a spear or an arrowhead? There's nothing about the way it looks that should represent that. Ignore the diamond. That's something from somewhere else. I just couldn't cut it out. And also, look at how it represents fertilizing the male principle. And this zigzag here is written masculine. So it's not only that. Also, it represents danger and other things like that in both cultures, by the way. Now that I've established a trend, let's go to the cross. Now bear with me here. So we read, For women who use the symbol associated with the diamond symbolizes the bird, a symbol of beauty and agility. The symbol also symbolizes the two legs and the two arms of a man. Okay, so... Last time, I showed you that there was that figure that symbolizes a man with his legs open and uh, with his arms raised. And clearly, that's the last symbolism of this. So clearly, the cross and that symbol are one. 2,000 years. Its alphabet is full of symbolic meaning. Here, Ajazul defines one of the most famous and recognizable letters. If you see this symbol painted, you know you are in Amazigh friendly territory. So you can clearly see here that this cross is the same as that look that man with his arms raised or what we would call the headrest or the stool with the arms facing up like that. Now, something else that we need to pay attention to over here is the first symbol which is for women who use the symbol associated with the diamond now uh, this is a very important thing stay with me here when i say for women who use this symbol associated with the diamond so instead of seeing um a cross they see a diamond and remember, the diamond is the symbol for a woman who gets married. So let's go see what the Zulus think of the cross. So over here, we have a verb, pambana, which is cross or to pass by one another as people coming in opposite directions or a string of beads on the body knock together, clash with, contradict one another. Now, why is this a important thing? Well, this is an important thing because the word cross is spambano, meaning to cross one another. But it's not a cross in the same sense. It's actually a diamond shape, as you will see. So when we look at the cross, what you will notice is that even though the cross is like this, it's actually two triangles kissing at the tip. If you notice, it's two triangles kissing at the tip. And this is how men would have seen it. And this is the men cross. But then for the woman, it's a diamond shape. And this is how women would have seen the cross. It's still called a cross, but technically for women, it's a diamond. And this is what they're referring to in the symbol when they say for the woman who use this symbol associated with a diamond. While they say 
it symbolizes beauty and agility. And then they say it also symbolizes the two legs and two arms of a man, which is that symbol that I showed you. So this is how you really look at the way that it's shaped. There's three ancient words for a cross in Zulu. There's pau, which here you can see the lost definition is or as a sign of the cross and baptism or but at first it says a mark or a sign as a notch on the ear or mark on the back of cattle and you must remember that i showed you that cattle represents humans and it does that stretchy thing the second definition is te temisa which you can see there, noun, a cross. This has to do with what I was talking about before, make to be cross or to be fretful. In other words, smashing into each other, just like how that uh, shape, those two shapes hitting into each other are. This is why there's always like a... Um, gesture of smashing and then it's pambano and you can see here pambanisa pambanisa a strike cross come to blows and there it is the zulu cross mi mimicking the southern cross in the sky and if you notice the southern cross again resembles this upwardness with the hands raised and the arms far apart and it mimics the amazig ritual symbol and it mimics with this triangle you notice that with those arms on the symbol touching at the tips that resembles masculinity or masculine um marriage or masculine person who's married and this is what the cross is resembling when it's completely on its own like the amazig one said so now let's transfer what we just learned from egypt okay so we've got nut who's the sky that's the upper part of this layer we've got geb who's the ground that's the lower part of this layer. And we've got Shu, who's in the middle. Shu is the air. And you'll notice that the cross also symbolizes the air. It also symbolizes life. And it also symbolizes a mirror. And you can see why a mirror would resemble life. This also resembles the afterlife coming back from the dead so this y shape which is supposed to resemble shoe and this um cross with a teardrop shape is also supposed to resemble shoe and you can see that it's air and air because shoe resembles the atmosphere the middle of the two nut and geb he separates them creating a difference between the air between the sky and the ground and instead of having his arms raised completely here his arms are just straight apart mimicking the southern cross and so this is how you get to the cross and the cross then is transferred to Christianity and utilized forevermore. One of the earliest depictions of Jesus is a mockery made by a Roman, and it reads, Alexamenos worships his God. And you can see that they put a donkey over there instead of a sheep, in order to mock. Now, this is believed to have been made in 200 AD, 
but it's not far off from other crucifixes made all over the world. By the third century, Christianity was adopted by the Ethiopians, and you can see this pendant that's written in gears, and it has a bunch of crosses, Christian crosses. And this is only a hundred years after that mockery that had a donkey on it, which means Ethiopia was one of the quickest areas in the world to adopt Christianity. But the real oldest symbol of Christianity is the storogram, which depicts a hanging Jesus and was used in writing to secretly write Christian messages in Roman era. And you can see that it's a mix of the letter T and the letter R, and it's called Toru, which storu in Greek meant crucify or cross. And so that's why they use this letter. This is about as old as Christianity itself. And you can see that it resembles the Ankh in Egypt. And also, by extension, it resembles the cross in the sky, the Southern Cross, and all these other African crosses. Another symbol used to hide Christianity under Roman occupation was this chiro, which is a mix of the letter P and the letter X, but it's actually a crucifix. And you can see that it's tilted in the same way that the, the crucifix would have been seen by the Africans, where it's two triangles rather than a cross straight away. But it actually, you can see that it's, also, it's got both symbols, the, the arms raised and the sideways arms of Jesus hanging on the cross. The Chiro. The chiro is one of the earliest forms of Christogram. A Christogram is combining letters to abbreviate the name of Jesus Christ. The chiro is made by superimposing the first two Greek letters, chi and rho, from the Greek word Christos. Christos is the name for Jesus Christ in Greek. The chiro is one of the oldest Christograms ever recorded. Why does the chiro matter? In the first hundred years of Christianity, the chiro was a secret sign of Christians to identify themselves. But Constantine's conquering of Rome elevated the symbol to epic scale. Other crosses that show this similarity are the Agadez cross of the Tuareg people in Niger, and this cross resembles two shapes. First, a cross, and then secondly, a diamond or a shield shape or a, some kind of plate. The meaning of this cross is a veiled in mystery, but if you've been watching this video, you probably already have an idea what it means. Now, if you see here, it says at the bottom, they are suspended from the neck. In the case of Tanelit, it is fixed on the veil of a woman on her forehead, but it is turned upside down. We read the Southern Cross or the Crooks and two bright pointers, Alpha and Beta Centauri, are probably the most recognizable of the Southern Stars, and they feature prominently in African star lore. In Sutu, Tswana, and Venda traditions, these stars are Ditudra. The giraffes, the bright stars of the crooks, are male giraffes, and the two pointers are female. The Venda called the fainter stars of the southern cross to Dan, the little giraffe they also say that the mouth begins 
when the crescent moon can be seen for the first time and at the same time the lower two giraffes stars are just below the horizon and the upper two are just visible. Sutu Law tells that when the giraffe stars are seen close to the southwestern horizon just after sunset, they indicate the beginning of cultivating season. Now, I did not ignore the final symbol, which is symbolizing of the bird. This sign symbolizes the bird. And you can see it symbolizes like a gliding bird. If you pay attention, you can see that it's like a bird with its wings fully spread. Now, this is the same in Zulu mythology, as you will see. So in Zulu, there's a word called ukozi, which means a large bird of prey that devours uh, rock rabbits. And it glides over in that same way. And it's also applied to a violent, uh, passionate man. Now, if you look down there, it says example. Mina angina ando dangi no kozi. It means I don't have a husband. I have a kite. In other words, I don't have a husband. I have the kite shape. I have a kite, meaning I have a bird. I have a bird with its wings spread, meaning that the man is a, a similar to a bird of prey.